Tēnā koe, Elizabeth. Nau mai. Te pai tua tahi, nō hea koe. Uh, he mokupuna o o te taira whiti. Ko whānau ākai, ko Ngāti Oneone, ko te aitanga mahaki okina iwi. Uh, so I come from the paradise of Gisborne, where I live now. Kia ora. As Māori, what have we lost? What did the spectrum of sexuality and gender look like before colonisation? We lost so much when the attack on our language and our culture. The loss of the gender fluidity that we might have had and the loss of sex positivity. That still exists in pockets around our country. I think I come from a place pretty sex positive. But only recently have different ones of us been taking up, saying actually this is as important, this is as much of who we are as our language, and this is a part of our culture. Oh, yeah, because this is something that shapes strength and uh, identity, right? Exactly right. Yeah. And if we forget where we came from and who we are, and we place all of this colonial, the homophobia, the biphobia, the transphobia, on top of what that is, and we've completely lost and forgotten, actually, who our ancestors were and how they lived, that this was always a Māori thing. What was the reaction when you came out to your community? I was living in Dunedin with my mother when I came out. My family were really supportive. I hitchhiked from Dunedin to come to Gisborne to tell my great-grandmother, who was born in 1903. I had to try to explain to her what lesbian meant. She'd never heard that word. And I had to try and say, oh, I wanted to have a girlfriend. She goes, oh, yes, I've got girlfriends. OK, OK. No, and I, to the point where I had to say, actually, no, I'm going to try and find someone who's willing to have sex with me. Uh, don't know who that might be, but there'll be a woman. And that's when she said to me, she goes, ah, oh, like my aunties. My aunties, my distant tūpuna takatāpui, were living as couples inside our whānau, oh. accepted and loved inside the whānau. When I said to my nan, what word did you call them? She goes, we didn't have a word. They're just part of the family. They're part of the whānau. And so that's a really important thing. I want our kids today, I want all of our people who identify in whatever gender, sexuality or their diverse sex characteristics to just feel normal. That's all anyone wants. Yeah, low bar. <laughs> yeah. Low bar, but apparently really hard to yeah, achieve. Yeah, really hard for <laughs> some of the nosier people out there. One of the stories in your thesis is about a young missionary called William Yates, who was sent home for bad behaviour with young Māori men. Mini <laughs> Māori men. So he was a missionary who was over here and he got into trouble. He actually got in trouble on the boats coming over uh, for his dalliances. He got taken to court because, of course, the British bought their laws that said now this is illegal, something we had no problem with. So we pretty much ignored the fact that they thought it was illegal. And so when they went to court, the Fano and even those young men themselves just did not have a problem with it. Aye. Two things we learned from that. One, that we didn't have a problem with it. Uh, but two, we had no punishment for it. And that's how we know that our people, that it was accepted. Aye. And it was kind of a bit ordinary. And I gathered from some of the things that I read that actually being good at sex was something that people took a lot of pride in. That's because right. you could practice with different partners and identify how you wanted. So then you you were like, I'm I'm a bit good at this. Yeah. I mean it's it's a joyful thing when you find a a diary entry of some sailor complaining because a Māori woman told them they weren't good enough. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, yeah, do some work. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need any more proof than that. We knew what we wanted and how to get it. <laughs> Did any of these uh, narratives sort of end up in our raranga, in our whakairo, other mahiaranga that we can sort of see visually? Absolutely, those stories, because this were oral traditions. That's all our stories were woven, carved and sung. You go in any whare in this country, there's sex positivity happening on the walls. Right. Recently, I found on one of our marae at home is an example of someone who absolutely appears to be uh, intersex. The carving very clearly shows that up the top is male and at the bottom is female. Those were the stories. This is the real life and it is preserved for us in wood. 
That is amazing. That's it's fully amazing. When I found it, I flipped awesome out. Awesome corduroy. <laughs> I bet. I flipped out. I bet. Yeah, it's a big deal. 